So as of February 15th, we're going to review the events manager, which is where we can edit the pricing for the Future Flight Aviation Center and Boeing Tour, as well as the aerospace gallery. So we're going to go ahead and click on the Future Flight Aviation Center. Um, go ahead and click edit on that. And now that's going to take us into the dashboard where we can see uh, some of the basic information. Uh, again, within the basic information in here, in here, this is where you can edit things uh, that show up on the front end of the site. So for example, if we look in the front end here um, and we go ahead and click back here and we look at this, it says includes aerospace gallery and strategic admission and admission to the 90 minute Boeing tour. We can edit those things from within here if we like. Uh, simply by clicking into the basic information and uh, editing some of the names of uh, what this is called. For example, this is where the Future of Flight Aviation Center and Boeing Tour name comes from. Uh, we can also click on description and if we want we can expand this here and edit uh, whatever is being shown. This again is the, the excerpt that is displayed on the event list and this is the description that's displayed once you actually click uh, onto one. So for example, this is the small one, and then if I click into this, again, down below here, I have a, a larger description that I can edit. So let's go ahead and click on the media tab as well. Within the media, this is where we can see some of the additional images that are here. Again, these can be changed anytime. Uh, you'll notice that there's a few gallery images down here. These are just placeholder images that were taken from the website, but those can be changed uh, at any time uh, by any administrative staff. So uh, let's go ahead and click back on, uh, let's go back to the dashboard here, and we'll go ahead and click on the tickets tab. The tickets tab is going to allow us to set the tickets uh, and the ticket tiers and pricing. So within here we can see uh, what is here. So we can see that there's an adult, a senior, a military, youth, Boeing employees, and retirees, as well as Institute of Flight member, and then our DTO T1 and T2 ticket tiers. Now these ones you'll notice are hidden. That means that they do not show up on the front. If we click on one of these uh, particular times, we will not see the GTO T1 and 2 ticket tiers. And that is simply because uh, they are set to hidden currently in the admin. So let's go ahead and click uh, into a particular ticket tier, such as adult. And if we click on it, uh, we can either click directly on it or we can click on the gear setting here and then click edit. Those will both go to the same place. So within here we can see this is the name, adult, and then parentheses 16 to 64. Um, so again, if we clicked on this, we can see there's the name in the front end, and then down below it, it says 16 years of age and older. And so that text is coming from the subtitle, as you can see right here under 16 years of age and older. So that, that uh, down below here, we also have some ticket display text. The ticket display text shows admission tax. It's just a, a field, as it, as it mentions here, when you hover over the little question mark. This text will be displayed on printed and e-ticket formats. Again, it's just any additional text that you want to show on the, the e-tickets and the printed tickets. Uh, we have already set those to the correct admission taxes for each particular ticket tier, um, but it is just uh, static text. If we look at the pricing here, this is set to 25, so if you want to change the pricing, you could go ahead and do that. Um, and then obviously if you wanted to set the inventory right now, uh, we do not care which uh, inventories uh, are sold, which kind of ticket tiers are sold for any particular time slot. We only care how many are sold, such as the 52. Uh, but if you wanted to, you could limit uh, the number uh, that were available um, per time slot just simply by, by editing it here. Um, so that's pretty much going to cover everything we need to do. You'll notice we do have a a limit here from uh, 1 to 52 tickets per order. Again, um, that does uh, that can be changed if we want, uh, but it is set to 52, meaning that uh, in any one particular order, uh, no one can select more than 52 tickets. But again, you can always set that to 104. It'll always be limited by how many, um, how many, uh, in, how much inventory is available for the particular time slot. So one of the other things we can do as well uh, is go in and edit any of these additional other ticket tiers that are here. Uh, we can also reorder these if we want. Uh, again, we're not if we want to reorder the ticket types, this is the ticket type right here, this green one. And then these are the ticket tiers, uh, all of these different tiers. So again, if I did want to reorder these, which uh, they should all be in the correct order right now, but I can click Actions, Reorder, and that will enable it. 
And then if I wanted to get out of that, I can click actions reorder again, and that will get me out of that. So for example, if I wanted to go actions reorder, now I can drag and drop, simply put this one above it, and then I can click save. All right, that will go ahead and save that. And then if I want, I can go ahead and click actions. Uh, again, I'm still reordering right now. So if I want to put this one back to where it was, I'm going to save those again. And then I'm going to go to actions reorder and, and, and disable that. So now I've gone ahead and moved those around uh, and got them back to where they were before. So that's how we can uh, reorder ticket tiers if uh, we need to put them in a different order so they display differently. So let's go ahead and click back uh, to the event dashboard here again. And now we can go ahead, we don't need to do anything with the payment processor, uh, the receipts and e-ticket settings. If we wanted to edit these, we can go ahead and click in here. And again, this is what's going to be displayed um, uh, on the e-ticket itself. So if we wanted to use the default receipt settings, which is what we're doing, those are gonna be under settings receipts. Uh, and you guys can edit those as much as you want. Uh, however, um, these ones uh, currently on the e-tickets, we're using uh, this particular text will show up on the printed e-tickets uh, right now. So if you wanted to edit that, you can simply go into this and edit that at any time. Uh, so we're going to go back to the event dashboard once more. And now you'll see one more area here, which is called time slots. So this is the available days and times for each of the tours. So we can click on the configure time slots. And then this is going to load up and show us all of our individual time slots. So we have time slots from uh, 8.30 for the extended hours for summer, all the way down every 30 minutes, all the way down to 5 o'clock. And so if we wanted to, these have already been configured, uh, and they shouldn't really ever have to be changed. But if we click on one, such as 9 a.m., uh, we've got it set to 90 minutes. And then uh, the purchase cutoff is set to 30 minutes before. And so what that means is that someone uh, cannot purchase uh, if it's uh, within 30 minutes of the one o'clock tour, uh, let's say it's uh, you know 12.45 p.m., they will not be able to purchase because of the purchase cutoff time. Now, of course, the box office uh, users can go ahead and place those uh, at any time, as long as it's uh, the current day, they can go ahead and place those. Uh, so we shouldn't have to change any of these things. They've already been configured for all the time slots, uh, but this is where they are. Uh, and if we want to click uh, and look at the schedule for them, uh, let's click on schedule. Under the schedule tab, we can, uh, we can turn, we can enable new slots for days. Let's say that if the capacity uh, gets, uh, uh, let's say that for example, we click into March, uh, we can see these are the default uh, time slots that are turned on for the month of March. So I can see this is the, the name of this uh, date set, if you will, uh, is called March, 2017. Uh, we have created date sets for each individual um, individual month right now. So you can see January, February, March. Uh, and the reason for that is to give as much flexibility to the Boeing team and the IF team to be able to um, you know, set those on a month by month basis and enable those for GTOs on a month by month basis as well. So if we click on March, 2017, we can see that the nine o'clock, 10, 10, 30, 11, 12, one, two, and three are the ones that are on by default. If we simply click on 2017 here, it will show us all the months uh, for this from this date range, right? Which is starting on the first and ending on the 31st. Um, and if we wanted, let's say on a particular day, such as uh, March 27th, uh, or even um, let's yeah, let's click on March 27th. We could click on that and we could add an additional time. So the time slots that are here, I can add or delete additional time. So let's say that the uh, 11 o'clock was pretty full, and the 12 o'clock was full, so I wanted to go ahead and add an 11.30. So I can simply do that, and of course, if I wanted to add another one, maybe I wanted to add 12.30 as well, I could simply add a 12.30, and that would add that there. And I don't have to do anything else, I don't have to save it, um, that is uh, how I add those uh, to, for additional time slots. You can delete them, uh, but once you sell a ticket, you really shouldn't be removing them. You can turn them off from the bookings manager, uh, just like we covered in the bookings time slots manager. Uh, you can just go ahead and disable those if you needed to, or if you did want to remove them and you added them on accident, you can just check the box and then go ahead and delete those uh, additional times that were added. So if we simply look in the front end now, uh, and we were to go ahead and click on uh, March here. Let's click on uh, March, the week of March 27th here. We should see uh, an 11.30 and a 12.30 time slot now available um, that uh, have been added due to, you know, let's say that these ones were busy, for example. Um, so that's how we do that. 
we can uh, edit and remove those as much as we want, um, but that is how we go ahead and add those time slots. So that should just about wrap us up on the uh, on the event manager and the uh, and how we edit all of the information within there. Uh, pretty straightforward. We'll be doing more videos on some of the other sections.